in this module we will discuss about aneuploidy and chromosomal disorders in humans. Aneuploidy is defined as numerical changes that is gain or loss of one or more chromosome in the diploid set of chromosome. Now, aneuploidy resulting from non disjunction or non separation of chromosome during meiosis in human beings causes different types of chromosomal abnormalities such as Down syndrome, its karyotype is twice n equal to 47 plus 21 and its birth frequency is very high 1 in 700. Its chromosome formula is twice n plus 1 that is trisomy of 21. Another syndrome which is also very common this is Turner syndrome. This is one monosomy, it's a monosomic that is its karyotype is 45 XO and its frequency is 1 in 2500. These are female in phenotype. Its chromosome formula is twice n minus 1. On the other hand, in case of Klinefelter syndrome, diploid chromosome number is 47XXY and its frequency is 1 in 500 light bars. They are male in phenotype. Its chromosome formula is twice n plus 1. Here, one extra X chromosome is present. On the other hand, in case of Edward and Patau syndrome, there is a trisomy of 18 and 13 and their frequency or birth frequency is they are very rare and very less, one in 8000 and one in 20,000 that is Edward and Patau syndrome respectively and their chromosome formula is twice n plus 1 and twice n plus 1 in both the cases. So here there is a trisomy of chromosome number 18 and chromosome number 30. Now how this non-disjunction originated? Because this is due to your non-disjunction, your chromosomal abnormalities occur. In case of your normal meiosis, there are two meiotic division, first meiotic division and second meiotic division. First meiotic division is called reduction division and second meiotic division is called equational divisions. So here you can see that is the at first meiotic division two chromosomes separated and at second meiosis normal gametes are formed. So, normal haploid gametes are formed over here. So, this is the result of a normal meiotic divisions. On the other hand, if non-disjunction or non-separation occurs, then what will happen? If non-disjunction occur at first meiotic division, then disomic gametes will be formed. There are two disomic gametes and two nullisomic gametes will be formed. And in case of your disomic gametes, when it will be fertilized by a normal gamete, so trisomy will be originated. So this is the origin of trisomy, if there is a meiosis, that is if there is a non-disjunction in first meiotic division. Now there is also non-disjunction occur at second meiotic divisions. 
So if non-disjunction occur at second meiotic divisions, then what will happen? So as a result of which it is less, less severe than non-disjunction at first meiotic division. If non-disjunction occur at second meiotic division, then a disomic gametes will be formed and a nullisomic gametes will be formed. On the other hand, there are two normal gametes will also form. So here, these disomic gametes and these nullisomic gametes are abnormal, while two normal gametes they are normally formed. So these disomic gametes results in the formation of trisomy. Now Down syndrome, which is one of the most frequent occurred, its frequency is 1 in 700. Now this Down syndrome, this was first discovered in the year 1866 by a British physician, Langdon Down. Now people with Down syndrome has it some typical clinical features such as protruding tongue. Here in this picture we are seeing protruding tongue, then flat nasal breeze, then straight hairs, brachycephaly, and over and above they suffer from severe mental retardation. Now in the case of Down syndrome, the karyotype which is the golden standard for diagnosis of Down syndrome, the karyotype here shows that is trisomy of 21. So trisomy 21 which indicates or confirm the diagnosis of Down syndrome. So here in the stereotypes, trisomy 21 is shown. Moreover, we can also undertake molecular diagnosis of Down syndrome with the help of microsatellite marker. So what is the advantage of molecular diagnosis? Main advantage of molecular diagnosis is that with the help of molecular diagnosis, we can make a prenatal diagnosis. Side by side, karyotype takes much more time as a result of which if you make a molecular diagnosis, then we can do it very rapidly. That is within 48 hours, we can get the results. 24 to 48 hours, we can get the confirmed results. Also, we can also find out the parental origin of non-disjunctions. So here in this gel picture, this is one polyacrylamide gel pictures, here we can see in one lane, this DS lane, here three alleles are showing by three bands. So these three bands indicates the trisomy 21. So another lane, we are also showing another Down syndrome patients with a three bands or tri allele, it is also trisomy 21. Now another lane we are also showing over here, here it is mother that is with normal 221 chromosomes. So if you compare with a DS with this mother, we can find that these two bands are aligned with DS out of three bands, two bands are aligning perfectly with the mother's two bands. So this is we can say maternal in origin. So this molecular diagnosis, which can be carried out with the help of microsatellite markers, uh, we can very rapidly diagnose Down syndrome or trisomy 21 Down syndrome. Now on the other hand, in case of Turner syndrome, this syndrome was discovered by Henry Turner in the year 1938. So in case of human, this Turner syndrome is the only viable monosomic with 45 X karyotype. Now they are female in phenotype. In this picture we are showing one Turner syndrome phenotype. 
So, female in phenotype, some webbed necks are there, short in statures, ovaries are not fully developed, immature ovary. They are normally sterile and they have got a cardiovascular deficiency. They can be diagnosed with karyotype. So, here in this karyotype, we are showing that is only one X chromosome is present. So, this is the by this karyotyping, we can also diagnose Turner syndrome. Now, in case of Turner syndrome, also we can diagnose with polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis using microsatellite marker. So, here in this gel picture, we are showing that is in the first gel pictures that is here it is normal that is in the second lane one TS that is Turner syndromes. Here we are showing one band that is X chromosome. Now it is parallel in the second gel picture the Turner syndromes it is devoid of your Y chromosome that is SRI gene is absent, Y chromosome is absent. So, from this gel picture, we can confirm there is only X chromosome is present, Y chromosome is absent. Other lanes are showing that is female control with a two X chromosomes, while male with a one X and your side by side, your also Y chromosome is present. So, here also is a male and your Y chromosome is also present. So, with the help of molecular diagnostics, we can very rapidly diagnose Turner syndrome patients. In case of your Klinefelter syndrome, this is the also one of the important syndrome which was discovered by H. F. Klinefelter in the year 1942. This Klinefelter syndromes, they are phenotypically male. Here in this picture, we are showing one uh, patient having Klinefelter syndrome. They have not generally tall, they have small testes, enlarged breast, and they have underdeveloped body hair. Now, their karyotype shows the presence of two X chromosomes that is XX and one Y is there. So, their karyotype consists of XXY. In case of Edwards syndrome, which is very rare syndrome and these are discovered during 1960s, here we find there is a, it is a trisomy 18, that is 3, 18 chromosome is present and this Edward syndromes, they are very short lived and they die within few weeks after birth and they have got a multiple congenital abnormalities. On the other hand, in case of Patau syndrome, here we will find there is a trisomy of 13. This is also very rare syndrome and also they die within few weeks after birth due to your multiple congenital abnormalities. So, another important molecular syndrome is there, it is called fragile X syndrome. So, this is the second most common syndrome by which patients suffer from mental retardation that is after Down syndrome. Now, here in this syndrome, there is a mutation in FMR1 gene. There is a mutation in FMR1 gene. Now, this fragile X mental retardation gene, fragile X mental retardation gene 1, here there is an expansion of CGG repeats. There is an expansion of CGG repeats. Here, if males normally have about 59 CGG repeats. Now, when the CGG repeats is enhanced to about 200, 50 to 200, then we call it pre-mutation, we call it pre-mutation. 
while if this CGG repeats, it enhanced to 2000, if it is enhanced to 2000, then we call it full mutations. On the other hand, in case of female, if the CGG repeats enhanced to 200, we call it your pre-mutation, while in case of female, if it is enhanced to 2000, then it is full mutations. But normally, females are less affected than male because they have got a normal X chromosomes. Now, here in this pedigree, we are showing that is how this from the male, this pre-mutation via female, that is carrier female, it has been transmitted to male. So, via carrier from the male, this from the father, unaffected father, this pre-mutations, it is being transferred to the affected male, where that is full mutation is occurred in the male, that is full mutations is shown. So, they suffer from mental retardations in this fragile X syndrome. So, in the conclusion, we can say that is non-disjunction is the one of the abnormality that is non-separation of the chromosomes by which chromosomal abnormalities developed. Though there are several hypotheses is there why non-disjunction occur. There is an advanced maternal age, reduced recombinations. So, these are a lot of hypotheses are around to explain the cause of non-disjunction during meiosis and which results in chromosomal abnormalities. So, here in this module, we have given key concepts and summary, uh, books for further reading, then some quizzes are there. Also, if you have any questions regarding this module, you are feel free to access. Thank you for participation in our online course.